Well, for the first time in a while, we are actually at peace. We have truces with many of the people who we would have been concerned about, and that we do not have truces with a few of the people that we have in our radar. So I hope you guys are all having an absolutely wonderful day today. We have lots of coalition stuff that we need to worry about over here. Uh, Hungary cannot join. Poland cannot join. Moldavia maybe could join if he's not a vassal. He's a vassal. So yeah, we're okay over here, but that means we're going to be done expanding this way for at least a while. But uh, as you can see here, our borders have been cleaned up quite a bit just in the last 20 some years. So all of that is quite good, quite fortunate for us. But since uh, in the last war, you can see here, uh, we gained a bit of PP because we eclipsed Venice and uh, QQ. And so it looks like we need to find two more rivals. Uh, generally, you want to pick a rival that is going to be an easy one for you to fight. We don't really have one that's going to be easy for us to fight. So I guess we'll go with Austria. That way we can attack them eventually. And uh, I suppose Poland makes the most sense uh, logistically. And with that, we are going to issue some embargoes. And as I've said before, if you guys are enjoying the campaign and you'd like to show your support, uh, go ahead and leave a like on the video and uh, leave a comment down below. Tell me a little bit about how you've experienced the campaign up to this point and uh, what you would like to see, uh, what you would like to hear explained, because I'm trying to be engaging in the comments and explain, you know, my thought process to the best of my abilities. So any of that sort of stuff is appreciated. So if we look over here, you also got to remember we have a vassal in this area and uh, it might be a good opportunity to attack these guys, though Castile and Naples would join them. So just kidding. I'm not going to do that. But anyways, so again, I've explained it before. We're holding off on this one basically because I want to wait until colonialism. That way I can dev the institution in our capital state. High uh, income is a pretty solid one as well. But as you can see here, construction costs and construction time. Right now we're saving up our money, so we're not going to be doing much building. Generally, this one might be good to wait until uh, you've unlocked sufficient number of manufacturers and you have enough money coming in that you can build a bunch of them. Uh, possibly if you can stack this with like economic ideas. So we're going to hold off on this one as well. This one here, we get some permanent claims and some manpower recovery and yearly prestige. So I suppose we will click this one. That will give us some permanent claims over here on these guys and over here, actually. So I'm not sure if I actually missed that before. But uh, yeah, check your missions often. It's, it's going to be good for you. So since we are at peace, we can take a look around at our economic situation. We are steering a bit from over here, but you can see there's a quite a bit that's also going down this way. So since this is stated up, we are and it has enough dev, we're going to spend some money. And uh, that will, instead of steering 197 and collecting 15.4, it goes up to 206 and we're collecting a bit more. So that's good. Uh, nice. Okay. Speaking of getting a little bit of money here, we are going to click this button to debase our currency and then accept this for lowered corruption, which is nice because that actually puts us really close to being able to uh, accept this institution here, which will give us quite a big tech discount. So you can see here we are going to be over the limit here uh, upon this. So let's take a look at sort of what our um, terrain looks like, because generally if you're deving, you want to dev in terrain that is good to dev that is uh farmlands and grasslands are the best ones and then uh, draw steps are 15 20 percent dev cost drylands are only five percent so grasslands farmlands and uh drylands are the best ones hills i believe are 25 mountains are 5th 35 uh hills are 25 and then highlands are 20. so you can see like these sorts of ones are the ones you want to go with um so Find a state, pick some dev cost bonuses here. And uh, again, we got this. So it's about that time that we dev this. We're not gonna get prosperity, so forget about that. Uh, what we wanna do here is you can see we're making 0.72 ducats a month. And though it is highlands, this is indeed a gold province. So you can see here, uh, monthly gold income will go up by 0.25 per month or per, per click. So that's one half a ducat a month, two ducats a month. And we're actually going to Dev this three times, which will allow us to click this three more times. 10 is generally what they say is kind of the golden Goldilocks zone because anything above that. Um, so basically the reason why gold is significant is the way it is because it doesn't act like a normal trade good where it is goods produced that go into a trade node. These goods produced go directly into our pockets. 
So this 1.9, I believe, is actually 1.9 gold per month. I'm, I'm not exactly sure on the math, but um, so if we take a look over, uh, say over here, you see there's a trade good price. And what that does is the goods produced here, so this is, we have 0.59 goods produced from 2.5. So roughly, and, and there's some modifiers for it, but roughly it adds 0.59 times 2.5 to the trade good of that node. So it's good to dev production, especially in provinces like cloth, right? So like this province here, Adern, this is probably where we're going to dev colonialism because it's 15 dev. And actually, we're going to cut that down. It's uh, 14 dev and um, it's got cloth, which is another 10% local dev cost. So various trade goods affect the provinces in various ways. Sailors is fine. Salt gives defensiveness. Uh, cows give uh, supply limit. And I believe grain gives force limit. So grain provinces can be quite useful. And if you actually are in your trade good menu and you click a province, it will select all those trade goods in the world and highlight them. So like gold, you can see all the gold provinces. So deving your gold up to 10 is good because the depletion percentage chance goes up exponentially every click. And 10 is sort of the best sort of bang for buck. You're gonna get the most money with the lowest amount of a uh, chance of uh, getting depleted. And since we've uh, prepped this guy over here for um, deving, we're gonna dev this up quite a bit as well. And uh, this is not the best. So we're going to come over here for this one as well. Because this is all grassland, grasslands and farmlands in these two provinces. So we're going to dev those two as well. We're going to be running out of Diplo dev here. Diplo mana here. So there we go. And just like that, if you come back over to your manpower map mode, you can see these provinces here are giving us quite a bit. Our max manpower is now 58,000, gaining almost 600 a month, which is really solid, right? So... Those things all add up to be quite significant. Looks like we don't have any major unrest, so this is good. And uh, now we can just chill for a bit. We're going to embrace the institution here. And uh, all that dev is going to end up going quite quite a ways for us. So let's also, don't forget to turn off edicts if you can. Uh, some edicts you have to wait, right? Like this edict, you have, to, you have to have an edict on for at least a year before you can revoke it. So these provinces right here are good. And then, like I said before, trade edict in your capital is okay especially if you have a very high uh trade power province this trade province right here constantinople alone is giving us over one quarter of our entire trade power in the node that's crazy and again you can uh let's actually go through this again because this is just solid it's literally free money we don't make that much money from base tax we make most of our money from trade, especially considering the fact that Constantinople is a pseudo end node. All the trade from over here, you can steer into this area. We're making 17 ducats a month from trade. Very solid because we're only making 13 a month from tax. And it's going to go down a little bit, but that's okay. We'll embrace institution here, which will allow us to take tech. Uh, I'm realistically going to push all the way through innovativeness because innovative ideas, it's going to make your advisors cheaper. Just allows you to snowball a bit faster. Maybe the second is doing okay. He's still uh, not too old either. So when we're taking a look over here, AQ's conquest. Okay, so they may full annex them. Mamluks are allied to them. Mm, that is unfortunate. Our truce with them isn't up until 74. Hmm. So let's take a look at our mission. This is a good place to check out that. So conquer Wallachia will give us some claims on Transylvania. That's fine. And conquer Bosnia will give us some claims on uh, Hungary and uh, over in Dalmatia. So... We're going to hold off on that. Safeguard Anatolia is solid because we need to get these claims started. So I'm going to wait a moment until these guys peace out of this war. Which is fine because we're allowing a little bit of money to stack up here. Uh, might as well build a couple of these buildings. Churches are generally not that good. But if you can build them in provinces that have really high base tax, then there's no reason not to. Uh, I don't really feel it's necessary to build these guys in like Selenik over here because Selenik is in um, um, the Ragusa trade node. So it's... We're not collecting anything over there. So having trade power here means nothing, except it does help with uh, protecting as far as how much we steer because you project a certain percentage of your trade power upstream. But it's it's not it's not really worth it. I will build one in Adana, though. Ad Adana? Adana? I, I was told that the A in uh, Turkish is sort of like a U sound. Uh, uh, Adana. And then it, this is a like a TCH. So it's like Ishel, I, I suppose. Ooh, okay. Two of a kind. So we can get mill mana or a half off level three mill advisor. I am uh, going to go ahead and say that's a good one. So that is totally fine with me. 
Only five ducats a month for five mil mana? We can afford that. They're also way cheaper to hire as well. So mill mana early on is so solid. Oh my goodness gracious. What an event here. Okay, cool. So we're getting idea cost until the death of Mehmet at the cost of 136 ducats. Or a level three admin guy half off. But we're working on an admin group. So I think I'm actually just going to go with that. So here's a nice opportunity. So uh, you can see here, we need 150 to up our stab. This would give us a free stab. So if you just wait, because these have a time to fire of like three months, I believe, roughly. So if we wait until we get the extra admin mana, I know we're working on an admin group, but if we click this, you can see the cost goes up to 200. So essentially what you're doing is for 150 admin, we just got two stab. And that extra 10% discipline is going to be quite useful as well. That will last for 10 years, I believe, six years. So uh, if we're going to use it, we might as well use it quite soon, right? So Theodoro here is guaranteed by Genoa, who we cannot co-belligerent because I would call in Castile. That would call in a few people over there. So I'm not really too bothered by them. So Cassia would accept vassalization. They're a horde, huh? Oh, that's a great horde I clicked on. So they have no... Mm-hmm. Okay. But yeah, we're waiting on these guys. I don't want to fight the Mamlux. But attacking these guys would serve no purpose because... Well, I suppose we might as well just get the war started. It's fine. Let's get you over there. Let's have our armies over here drilling. If we're going to get rebels, we'll we'll pull them out. But until then, I'm not really too worried about it. I'll keep the fort on the island just to see if I can bait them into... Um, trying to... Uh, uh, siege it down. And then, if you know... It, so oftentimes there's a nice little trick that you can do to try to get your armies of your enemies caught on, a, on an island and you can wipe them. I'm not really too bothered by it. So I'm going to do basically anything I can to keep the uh, burgers as loyal as possible. And I should have taken crown land, but we're up to 30 now because whenever you dev, you gain crown land, which is really useful. All right. Um... Yeah, I suppose 10 prestige for the legalism is good. Right, we also need to upgrade this guy to a level 2. Uh, the level 3 stab cost as well. Wish I would have actually picked that before. I didn't actually see that. So I would have actually saved some mana. So right now we're just going to sit here on this fort. Uh, we're actually looting him, which is kind of funny. So we're going to loot them. Make a little bit of money. No reason not to, right? Look at that. Montenegrin separatists. So yeah, we're gonna have to come up here on the yearly on the monthly tick here. We just don't want them to siege that down, but it looks like they're going to anyways. Here we go. Get the monthly or the uh, monthly morale tick. There we go. Just don't want them to occupy because they will um, get sep years of separatism in that province. All right, there we go. So. Here's a nice little trick you can do. These guys are, um, they hate me, but they have cores over here. So what we're going to do, we're going to set ourselves up for success. We have our siege guy over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to siege these guys down quickly. And in the meantime, we're thinking ahead. We're going to be going to war with these guys and these guys. So we don't need to be currying favors with these guys anymore. So what we need to do is pull them back. And then if you every once in a while, it's good to check your favors with your allies. We can get some money or some manpower. I'll take some money from them. And I think we can also take manpower as well. So we'll do that as well. Uh, next month here. He's at war now. Okay. So anyways, what we're going to do here is we're going to vassalize these guys, which is going to allow us to attack these guys for a reconquest, which means we'll be able to take these three provinces for basically free. Uh, and then we're also going to take this province here or, you know, a couple of provinces here. Maybe all of them that we need. We'll see. It's going to really depend because it's uh, it costs unjustified demand. So you pay Diplo for that. But uh, in the meantime, what we're doing is we're drilling our armies up just to get a little bit of extra oomph. And uh, when we attack these guys, we are going to have to go to war with the Mammies. So we have mill access. So this is good. The Apostle over here sieging on my vassal. Oh, no. Anyways, let's get these guys grouped up over here. 
because uh, the mams are very weak right now. Holy crap, they're uh, super weak actually. So let's take a look at uh, rivals. The Mamluks have very little manpower. Their army quality is not even close to ours and we have that extra discipline. Okay, we're, I have a feeling we're gonna steamroll through the Mamluks. That extra discipline from that event is really good and we wanna use it to the best of our abilities. So these guys, here, and here's what you can do. You can either annex them or vassalize them. If I vassalize them right now, they're gonna get a ton of negative malices uh, because I think you get minus 100 for force vassalization. They have aggressive expansion, uh, hostile relations, which will go away when we're not at war. But more importantly, it's like they have the declared war minus 23. So all these negative mo modifiers are, um, are powerful. And so what's actually the best way to do is to annex him. As long as you don't have other provinces that he has cores on, which we do not, we annex him. He only has cores on these provinces. So we annex him, release him from this province, and then attack um, attack for the reconquest because he will get the loyal, he'll be like a loyal little vassal boy because he won't have all the hatred in his heart from us um, releasing them before. So it looks like Crimea is like broken for some reason. Crimea, you want to go see your stuff back? Crimea AI is like derping out. We do need to be mindful that if they get over here that they could siege the stuff down and we need to turn our forts back on. But uh, until then, we're just going to kind of chill. So Biapas is doing that. Let's get a couple of these lads over here to siege that down. And uh, we should be able to white piece them pretty quickly. We probably don't have to siege his capital. I'd be surprised if we did. Whenever somebody's a small nation like that, they're usually pretty easy to piece out. Really? Occupied and besieged provinces. He's still at 32. Hmm. All right. I guess we're going to have to siege him down then. This is fine. All right, see, now they have access over here. So we got to turn a couple of these forts on. If, I should probably get a fort that communicates here. So like a, a fort like right here and a fort right there would probably be good. So let's build a fort right there. This is a marsh province as well. So anytime you can build a fort on a province that's going to give negative dice rolls, then it's good. Uh, but it's also better to build a fort on like a province like uh, Zeta here, which is mountains, because you can see here, local defensiveness, it automatically adds 25%. So it automatically adds 25% of the base of 30 days. So it automatically adds whatever that is, like uh, six or seven days to your siege ticks. So quite useful. We're going to keep pushing through admin tech because getting the neighbor bonus will be nice. But more importantly, a lot of people don't know this. Each idea you take gives you 2% off of tech cost for the rest of the game. So you can see here, ideas minus eight, it's because we have four ideas. So once you get through all of this, this is seven, I believe, you get seven. So we'll actually have 14% plus the neighbor bonus. All of those are really strong and they add up to be quite significant. And meanwhile, we're letting our spy network stick up on these guys, which will give us more siege ability on top of our guns of urban. So you guys are starting to pick up on, uh, oh, whoa, what are you doing? He just suicided his men. You guys are starting to pick up on our, uh, on our trend here. We are going to be... Um, essentially what we're doing is we're trying to stack as many modifiers as possible. And so again, you know, you just kind of come over here and annul a couple of treaties, get your steal as much prestige as you can. And then these guys, as I said, will get full annexed. And so it's seven AE, which is fine. We'll also take all their money. Why not? And then what you do is you come over. So you go to this menu here, you right click on your own country or you hit F1 and you go to uh, diplomacy. Click this guy here, Z is what it is on my screen. So that's on the S menu for your opinions menu. So right here, Z, then you scroll down to the bottom here. El Qadir, we'll get one province in Maresh. They will be Shia and we'll have Turkish culture. Very good. More importantly, look at that. That's it. They're a uh, Shia, which is kind of dumb. I think they were Sunni before. But that's okay, because since they're loyal and they, they actually like us and stuff, you can just enforce religion on them. They'll get a little bit of liberty desire, but that's fine. It doesn't matter. Uh, those those can be uh, counteracted. So now if we come over here, we can declare war on a reconquest CB. The Mamluks will join, which is fine. Uh, we're going to go for a province like Distivirgi or whatever. We will come over here and seize them down. And uh, we need to scorch a couple of provinces just to make sure that uh, we're not able to get jumped on. So this 13 stack over here, we should be good. We're going to continue to do all these. 20% manpower recovery speed is solid. It's one of the reasons why AI Ottomans are so broken. So we're also going to scorch this province here. It's dry lens, but basically what it does is it gives us a little bit of extra time to react if uh, the Ottomans were to get into our 
our, our, our grill. Uh, so looks like our three siege general died, sadly. How about a four siege? Even better. Um, hard liners, yes. So if you don't know, um, when you're black flag, you cannot go into your own provinces. Oopsies. But uh, if you go into a province that is controlled by your allies or controlled by you, you specifically, I think it has to be specifically you, we'll get on black flag there. So these guys are attacking over here in the mountains. That's fine. And so basically what I'm doing is I'm trying to bait the Ottomans or the Mamluks into taking a bad fight there. Acquire subjects, Diplo Annex costs. We don't need that right now. We're waiting on that. So, yes, yeah, so we have two subjects. So if you want, if we wanted to right now, we could go into the nobility and uh, enact the strong duchies reform, which is quite useful. Matter of fact, I think I'm going to do it because what it does is it gives you bonuses to your vassal's loyalty as well as Diplo slots. So you can see we have a max of up to six now. So quite solid. Um... Might as well get these guys down here. Keep these guys around just in case we need to defend our allies. And you can see here these siege ticks are very good. The reason why we're building our spy network is because we get that extra 7% siege ability. 18 day siege ticks. Very solid. Uh, are the Mamluks getting... Yes. So the Mamluks and AQ are both affected by this. Mamluks actually get a bonus 25% because they're our rival. And here they go. They're coming up here. So AI is being really dumb and derpy. The AI will oftentimes target your vassals, which is just hilarious in my opinion. Because there's, like, no downside to it. Gazik Mook is marched around all the way over here. So, let's, um... Mm hmm Yeah. This is not ideal. Because there's prosperity over there, isn't there? No, not anymore. Oh, they're blockading me. I missed that. Right. Seven heavies. Goodness gracious. That's crazy. Let's see if we can get a better admiral. Four shock. I'll take that. And, uh, they have no admiral. So should be pretty straightforward win for us. They have all those heavies, but we have all the galleys. So it's a definite win for us. Yeah, those blockades are painful. So I'm hoping that we can, you know what? I think we can just march these guys over. And here you go. So uh, Miltech has been taken, but you can see here, we can take it uh, one year from now and still get the innovativeness, which means on the next yearly tick, we can save 10% if we do it. So... You got to be mindful of that, though, because if you miss it, then you lose the six innovativeness, 0.6 all power cost for the rest of the game. So we're going to make sure we're uh, diligent and paying attention on the yearly tick for that. And meanwhile, you just got to sit here and kind of wait it out. Army tradition for naval tradition sounds good. Army tradition is really solid. It helps you roll better generals as well as gives you morale. Army tradition is all around a very solid modifier. So if we take a look at our army quality, Mamluks have 3.3 roughly, and we have 4.1. Discipline, we have 20% more discipline. Siege ability is really solid. Professionalism, we have much more than them. So any manpower that they lose in this war, they're not going to get back. Except for from, like, the timely regain, regen, right? Like, just regen over time. And again, uh, give your forts that you take over to your, your marches, specifically, if you have a march. Because we have 9 defensiveness, or 10 roughly. And we give it to uh, Dolkadir here, it's 4. If we transfer it back to ourselves and then over to Crimea, it's 20. So the siege ticks are much higher for them. So very good stuff. So we're just going to catch these guys out over here and uh, kill them all. Because why not, you know? Screw them. So this is probably not the best, but uh, it's okay. I just want to get these guys out of my lands because it's painful. Mamluks have 13,000 men over there. So let's carpet siege our stuff back. And we're just keeping an eye on our timer over here and making sure that we are going to annex or take a uh, Miltech on time. You see, I can lose a little bit of mill mana. We're ahead of time, so it's no big deal. Kill these stacks. Always catch your little small stacks out if you can. There's literally no reason not to. Okay, so these guys are heading back in. Or no, 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 they're not. They're heading out, which is good. And I'm trying to keep an eye out for that 13 stack of mams that I saw over there. Between that 13 stack and this 20 stack, that is their entire army. So you can see they have 3%. We have minus 40. So we have 17 day siege ticks and they have 30. Very solid. And come over here, find a province. Oh, there you go. There's a the 13 stack. So let's get up here and scorch this province. We're going to see if we can bait this uh, stack into a fight. 
So the fog of war, we may be attacking them. Yeah. See, that's a that's a bad thing about fog of war. So that's a minus two. Granted, with our combat bonuses we have, we're probably actually gonna win. But it's gonna be much more costly for us. So yeah, much more costly. But that's okay. We have some uh, rebels over here in Corfu and separatists apparently in uh, Naxos, which is weird, but that's okay. We have our next ability. Um, I think we're going to go with AE Impact. That's just going to be the best immediately. We've won the Siege of Damask or a Damascus. Scorch it. Give it to our vassal in Crimea and get these guys up here. We also have a uh, four stack of Dolkadiris attached to us. So that's good. Look at that. Even outnumbered, we absolutely clapped them, which is good. Look at that. We lost... 3,500 3, and they lost 6,400, 6,300. So solid. Uh, and so those guys are going to get handled and they also are marching back over here. So we're keeping an eye on that yearly click tick there. Because remember, this is going to be a mill tactics artillery fire. So we're going to unlock artillery and then artillery shock. So we're going to get be able to get cannons in our stacks, which cannons are a game changer. We lost. Oh, there you go. We killed our rebels. And uh, let's have these guys carpet siege down these lads. So in this war, we are going to take all of that. And then we're also going to take everything we have claims on. It's going to cost us some Diplo. It's fine. Um, I'm okay with that, especially considering that we're still going to be a year, a couple years ahead of time of tech. And even better yet, it's going to put us one step closer to our next mission. So once we get all this, we'll be able to integrate this guy, get all of this. And then we'll have two wars over here, one against this and Kaifa and one against QQ. And that will allow us to finish up the Safeguard Anatolia mission. And as we work through that, that'll get us permanent claims on, you guessed it, the Mammies. And then we're going to be able to start pushing down into here. Once you have permanent claims, if you don't know, permanent claims make it so uh, provinces are, excuse me, provinces core up 25% faster and uh, cost 25% less. So very solid, very, very solid. Permanent claims are one of the strongest modifiers in the game. So they're one of the strongest, you know, provincial things that you can get. Always advise against or always advise for trying to get as you're uh, pursuing your permanent claims. So that being said, the Mamluks don't really matter to me. Uh, having a long truce with them is fine, um, especially if it means we can take money from them. Because that basically means that we are going to weaken them. So more of this is fine. Let these guys lock in over here and wipe this little cab out. Oh, and I missed the miltech. Ah, see, I, I, I even said it. So we, we do not get the, um, we do not get the um, innovativeness for it. So learn from my mistakes. Take the tech on time. All right. So we got a stack over here. Get these lads over here, and let's head on down to Cairo. It's a little embarrassing because I specifically mentioned it multiple times. I'm going to attack them up here in the mountains, and we're going to keep on working through this. That extra 25% or 20% puts us over 630 manpower per month, which is really good. Now, let's see if we can catch these guys up here, preferably in a flatlands province, which it is. And uh, we should, we may actually wipe them right here. Yep. Very good. Siege our stuff back. If you don't know, since this got occupied, it stopped building the fort that we queued up earlier, but it doesn't matter because once you take it back, you will actually uh, regain it. So get you guys down to Cairo. These lads have no manpower left, which is good. Let's have these guys come down and siege on Al-Karak. And you can see the Mamluks are already on medium enthusiasm. Not feeling too good about the war anymore. We took out a loan, unfortunate. Uh, always, basically always go with uh, urban or the infrastructure. The extra manpower is really solid. And uh, since we accidentally messed up and uh, we are not able to take tech for uh, Diplo, I'm going to spend a little bit of mana and uh, get our manpower up a bit. So we're going to find some provinces that are decent. Woods are what? 15%? So yeah, let's, uh, let's dev up this state here. Specifically, you want to dev up your manpower. There we go. And just like that, we're up to 67,000 max manpower, 770 manpower a month. So you guys are starting to catch on to the fact that like manpower dev is really strong, right? If you didn't know, now you do. And now look at that. 18 day siege ticks on uh, capital, even though we got caught spying on them. We don't need to be doing that anymore either. 
So let's take a look here and see if we were to attack these guys, it would be very easy. So we're going to start spy network on them. And uh, these guys here would also be quite easy. So let's build our spy network on them. Recall the guy from the MAMs because we're not going to need him anymore. My vassal's full occupied. I really don't care at all, to be honest. Once we get the MAMs out of the war, it's uh, basically we're in the home stretch because we'll be able to peace out as quickly as we want because nobody else is going to be giving them any like relative strength of alliances or anything like that. So because everybody else in the war is super weak, like Aniza and Gazik Mook, they mean nothing. So we're good to do that. And uh, like I said, you transfer these forts over. Let's actually transfer that one over as well because A, you don't pay for it. And B, you uh, get the money from or uh, you... Um, get the defensiveness bonuses. So look at that, 33%, very good. And meanwhile, we're just trying to win some forts over here. We've won the Siege of al -Qurak. We will scorch that, give it to Crimea. Come on down to al -Quds. And uh, if they want to get onto it, they can. Otherwise they can siege this for their 37 day siege takes while we siege their capital at 18. See, base race, it's fine. I'll base race this, no problem. No problem at all. Let's have these guys drilling. And uh, yeah, this is fine. We got a 20 stack here. They're, these guys are just basically sitting here waiting for me to attack them. That's essentially what that means. There you go. They're heading into Al-Karak. I will head in and I will beat them up really badly. Despite the fact that uh, they outnumber us because we have mil tax and discipline advantage. Look at that. I lost under 2000 and they lost... 6,000. Pretty nuts. That's uh, that's pretty nuts. Because they were on a minus two fort. Plus we have all those bonuses. Again, we're going to wait. The 25% advisor cost is going to scale into the... Basically, the rest of the game will scale much better now. So let's have you guys come over here. He is our... We want our four siege general over there. And let's have you guys split. And siege down the... Uh, what is this thing called? The granary of the Mediterranean. Just give us a bunch of relatives uh, war score. They're going to be making some progress on siege in this back. But before they get the opportunity to, we're going to piece them out. So no big deal. A little bit of prestige and some legalism. I plan to take tech soon, so I don't really want to drop them legalism. But uh, we got three years left yet. So I suppose we can base that will actually allow us to pay off our um loan because i'm pretty sure you actually when you debase you get exactly one loan worth right yeah so then we can click that button there to get rid of the corruption and then we can click this button to get some more legalism and then we can pay off this loan which uh will make it so that'll save us an extra ducat a month in interest and uh very good let's take this province here and peace out the mammies for um, I could humiliate them. I don't really need to. Well, yeah, we'll humiliate them. There's no reason not to. Then we'll take as much money as they're willing to give us. There you go. And uh, just like that, we're uh, rich. We're, we're filthy rich, actually. Rich enough that we might want to consider uh, upgrading a couple of these guys here. Advisor cost 1,000 or 10%. That would actually give us an extra 10% on top of the 25 from this. Uh, So I think I'm actually willing to do that. So let's do that. And uh, I don't mind spending some manpower for it because... We're gaining plenty. I know we're at war, but like, it's really not going to be an issue. Um, we'll be able to take whatever we want in this war. Um, since they've occupied a bit of provinces back, they have um, a bit of extra war score than they did before. Because we had a lot of war score from occupying the uh, the mammies, but this is fine. We can go up to speed five for now. Um, I am not going to take any debt out, so... I have an aversion to it. I don't like losing money. Get you guys there. Missed that guy there. So let's get those guys killed. Destroy them all. You just kill the armies. All right. Very good. This is Scorch. So it takes them longer to walk into it. So we can just kill off all their armies here. And uh, get these guys full occupied again. The next one. Bureaucracy. Uh, I like the centralized bureaucracy. is the one that I tend to go with for the monthly autonomy change. Promoted cultures is okay. It'll get you a um, an extra, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, age of uh, reformation thing done. But I think I would rather go with autonomy change, especially considering, like I showed you guys before, uh, where was our autonomy? 
there right here we want these numbers we want these provinces to all be green and having local autonomy is going to only help that the next one administrative cadre is really good because you can get meritocratic recruitment to keep stacking advisor costs so as you can see uh again the tail of the tape is stacking modifiers so hopefully you guys learned a little bit in this episode if you did make sure you leave a comment down below and let me know what it was because i appreciate that feedback we are going to take this province from you and we are going to annex all of that and then we're going to 100 percent him because there's no reason not to well maybe we won't but uh we'll take everything that we're able to in this war so let's uh just take whatever money we're willing to take they're willing to give 90 percent no coalition will form, possibly, for the most part. Yeah, Mamlux won't be able to join. Venice has a truce. Harris and Govina and Wallachia both have a truce. See, you can see how we're, we're sort of stacking up these truces with people. And a uh, little bit of Diplo never killed anybody. We can take that now, which is really good. That gives us 20% of 25% advisor costs. And uh, as soon as we finish up this guy here, which we can sink a little bit more money there, establish this one here, which gives us stab cost for an idea cost. I'm actually willing to do that, I think. Really? All right, cool. Yeah, we'll go with that. So we don't need to core. We're going to need to core up some of this stuff. But uh, before we do that, right, you guessed it. We're going to yoink some dev here. And uh, what you can do is you can actually. Um, I forgot what I was going to say, but yeah, so that's good. We got that done there. Uh, we're going to suppress rebels here and we're going to get ready because we're going to go to war with these guys over here very soon. So, yes, hopefully you guys learned a little bit more today about how to sort of juggle truces and how those truces can impact your game. We've lost our trader, unfortunate. Um, with an improved relations guy, that's fine with me. But, uh, yes, stay tuned for the next one where we are going to be trying to uh, get the rest of these provinces over here to continue our mission tree. And uh, hopefully we can uh, not implode from a bunch of unrest. So I generally sort by overextension and then core them up in that order. Uh, we also are going to be behind on tech. So those sorts of things. Make sure you catch up on mill. Always stay ahead on mill tech if you can. And then if you can also be ahead on Diplo for the extra 20% trade efficiency, it's really solid. Admin isn't necessarily as important. I would rather spend it on coring and then just catch up on admin later. But yes, anyways, that's all I got for you for today. This is Chewishu, and I will catch you guys later.